Do you ever wonder if your pet that's still here is mourning the passing of your pet on the other side? Today, we're gonna to be talking about that from the point of view of the animals in my experience as an animal communicator. Hi, my name is Danielle McKinnon. I'm an animal communicator. That means I connect psychically with animals. One of the questions that I see a lot on my Facebook and my YouTube and in emails is, is my pet that I have now missing my pet that has crossed over? So I've got three main points I'm going to share with you um, about what the animals have shared with me, shown me, and demonstrated about their connection with the animals that have crossed over. So I'm gonna give it to you from the animals that are here's point of view, as well as the animals that have crossed over their point of view. All right. When I first started doing animal communication, I would connect with animals that had crossed over and I would connect that animals were, with animals that were still here. And I would ask, you know, are you mourning? What's going on? And the animals that were still here would say, no, I'm not mourning. And so for a long time, I took it at, no, I'm not mourning. But what they were really saying to me is, no, I'm not mourning like you mourn, Danielle. No, I'm not mourning like humans mourn. And here's the big difference that it took me actually several years in conversations with animals to understand. What they were really saying was, I don't mourn like you mourn. I miss my companion's physical body, but I still have a connection to them through spirit, through energy, through intuition, through knowing. I love that. And I loved it when I finally learned that. But I only learned it because so many people are coming to me saying, I feel like my dog is grieving the passing of my other dog. My cat is grieving the passing of my horse or, or whatever it was. And I kept saying, I'd be like, well, animals don't grieve. I had it so wrong. <laughs> I had it so wrong. They still have that connection going on. But here's why they do grieve. They grieve the physical presence being gone of that animal. Um, they still have that other wonderful spiritual connection and they can still communicate with one another, but the physical presence is gone. And what does that mean when the physical presence is gone? It means maybe they don't go on as many walks. It means maybe the food situation is different. It means uh, some parts of their life are different. And most importantly for our pets, it means that probably the human attached to that animal is making changes in their life that the animal that is um, still here didn't necessarily ask for or want but since we the humans are grieving we're making changes we're behaving differently and I would say that is the biggest factor influencing the behavior of an animal of our pets that seems like they're in big grief yes they're grieving the loss of the physical presence but they're also very often grieving the missing of the daily life and how it was they're also very often reacting to because they're so connected to us they're reacting to how we are behaving. So if your dog passed and you still have another dog here and you're sitting around with that other dog, you're no longer doing the walks and you're hugging your dog that's still here and crying for hours, that's a lot for the one that's still here to handle. So be very cognizant of how you are behaving. It does not mean pretending to your animal that's still here that you're not grieving, but it does mean grieve healthily. Taking it all out on the one that's still here is going to make their own grieving process more challenging. Animals plan their passing. You can watch my video about that to learn more about it, but they plan uh, when, why, how, who, where, they plan all of that. They even plan who is there with them. So your human desire to make sure that your dog sees that your other dog is passing or has passed is more of a human desire. They are connected at a spiritual level. They are connected even no matter what side of the veil they're on. And so they know what's going on. It does help in some senses to do that if the two were very, very attached in the physical world, but I've never met an animal 
who during an animal communication session said to me, well, Danielle, I just can't get over this. I'm upset because I didn't know that this was happening or I need to see the closure. I need to see to have closure. You know how you're watching like a TV show and the person on the TV show will say, I want to see the body right? This isn't anything that animals say to me. It's more of a human desire. Okay. I feel like he saw what's going on with her. And so we're more okay now, that kind of thing. But for animals that are our pets living in our human world, I haven't heard that this is a thing that they need from them. Last, and this is the kind of the fun, cool one. Animals experience death very differently from us because they have a connection to the big picture. They access the big picture so much more easily and pretty much all the time. <laughs> they live at the 3D level. This is a survival level where they want food and they get scared by things. But in their everyday life, they also just in, have, you know, embrace the other world, the spiritual world heaven, whatever we're going to call it, they embrace that and they are connected to it all the time. I teach people in classes how to connect to that, how to live connected to that. But animals live with that every day. And this is why when animals are mourning their dead, it's a very different situation than when humans are mourning their dead. Because the animals that are still here are so connected to the animals that have crossed over it provides you as the human who loves them and has lived with them a unique opportunity to watch your animal that's still here for signs that your animal that's on the other side is communicating with the animal still here is sending messages through the animal that's still here um you know you see the the cat your cat that's still here staring off into space or seeming to meow at something that's not there or playing with something that's not there. Take these as signs that, hey, the one that's crossed over is visiting. A lot of the time, the connection that they have to one another, even though one has crossed over, is a great way for you to feel better and get some of your own closure. Hey, they're connected, they're talking, they're, they're communicating, and they're even communicating with me. All right, definitely go and watch the video about animals being afraid to die so you can understand a bit more about the dying process for animals.